My name is Andrea Pennington. I'm an integrative physician, acupuncturist, best-selling author, and international speaker. My career in broadcast and digital media spans over 20 years. As past medical director for Discovery Health Channel, I've had multiple appearances on Oprah, Dr. Oz, and CNN, and my TED Talks have reached two and a half million people. For the last several years, I've been helping other doctors, dentists, healers, and coaches from around the world to share their messages with global audiences through personal branding, publishing, online courses, and media training. And what makes this combination unique is that I am bringing my 20 years of expertise as a professional speaker and coaching other people on their TED style talks so I know what it takes to craft a keynote, a TED Talk, and even workshop presentations so that you communicate your message with confidence and clarity. Hello and welcome, beautiful soul. I am so happy to have you back for day five of our deep dive live business training. Welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Andrea Pennington, the Managing Director for Make Your Mark Global and your host of these live deep dive sessions. Please feel free to chime in and let us know where you are watching from. And of course, if you are watching on the replay, just type in the comment section, hashtag replay, and we will show you some love as well. Welcome, Hamara. Welcome, Frank. Glad to have you. And Kim, good to have you back. We just finished chatting over on Facebook Messenger. Welcome, Asil. Very good to have you here as usual. And Trevor, what's up from the U.S.? Thank you for getting up early and joining us for the Deep Dives Live. And Hamara, or Shamara, you'll have to tell me how to pronounce your name. You're in Vero Beach, Florida. Awesome. So you're not in the snow, I take it. Well, I'm so glad to have you all back here. If you are curious about how to write a book in 90 days or less and have it published out into the World Wide Web, you're in the right place. So these are the six days of deep dive live training. I'm so excited to have people from all over the world. We've got Norway, we've got the US, we've got South Carolina, Carolina, I don't know where you are, but very happy that you're back again. And Noemi, welcome, welcome. All right, so these are the six days of deep dive training. These are the days where we get to help you build a conscious business. During these six days, we have covered so far, deep dive number one, how to define your personal brand identity, how to describe what you do and what makes you unique, Day two was all about nailing your niche, helping you define your ideal customer. Day three was outline your intellectual property so that you can make your own signature courses or books or TED Talks. We'll be using some of the information that you did in that session, so have your worksheets ready. Yesterday was deep dive number four and we talked about how to choose, test, and launch your first or next product. And today, it is deep dive number five. We are going to dive into my three secrets on how to write and publish a book in 90 days or less. And yes, it can be done even with excellence. And then tomorrow is our last deep dive. Deep dive number six is how to craft your irresistible offer. So for those of you that don't like sales, this is going to help you out so, so much. So welcome again. I'm so very grateful to have you here with me for this deep dive live session. We did this last year and it was a hit. People were very grateful to have uh, my live coaching during the pandemic. 
which, you know, was a challenge for pretty much everyone on the planet. And so I decided to do it again. Maybe you're not in as desperate a situation as you may have been last year. Maybe you've made some progress. One of the things that I'm so grateful for is that I have heard from some people who attended the deep dive last year in 2020, and they have written books. I've gotten three testimonials, and one where a dear friend actually put the book in the mail to me to the south of France. So I'm so blessed to, to say that this works if you work it. So I pray that you will work it. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, you can always send me an email and I will get back to you. And I wanna just jump right in to the three keys to getting a book done in 90 days or less. And maybe the first thing that I will share is there are a lot of benefits to becoming a published author. Now, if you are an egomaniac, someone who just wants to be a best-seller author just for the bragging rights, you're not in the right place. You can click off this video. Because what I really believe is that bringing a book out into the world is kind of a spiritual thing. It's like giving birth to a whole new entity that is going to have its own life. It's gonna to touch people in certain ways. And so the way I look at it is this. If you have had this feeling or you've heard a calling and you believe that you need to write a book, then it's true. I believe that all of the best ideas come from the divine. Where, whatever you call that spirit of the universe, God, higher power, it is from the spirit that we get these inspirations. Now, that's why I say, if, you, if this is about ego for you, then you, know, you can go watch some other expert. But for those people that I work with, it's all about really fulfilling part of our soul's destiny. And if your soul has already got this bubbling and tingling about getting a book out to the world, guess what that means? That means that there's already an audience waiting for it. Your ideal audience is already waiting. It's true. And so you're going to feel so relieved and so fulfilled when you finally get it out. It's like it is a little bit like giving birth. And I know for the guys out there, you don't know what that feeling is, but it is this sense of there's something in you that wants to be born into the world. And when you deny it, it causes frustration, it causes anxiety, it can even cause depression. Now, many of you already know my history. I have been in media and branding for over 20 years. And I wanna tell you about my first book because you might be in the same situation that I was before I became a published author. Now, in the last several years, I have written or contributed to over 15 books and published many of those. Many of those went on to be bestsellers. Um, so I wanna take you back in my timeline, back when I was still in the United States and I was working for the Discovery Health Channel as the medical director and spokesperson. Now, at the time, I represented Discovery Channel uh, when I was speaking at health events. And I happened to give a keynote speech on the five keys to living heart healthy. Pretty basic stuff, right? Anybody who's got a medical degree could probably tell you how to do it, right? But I injected my own kind of special sauce, my own uh, understanding of what it takes for us to get healthy um, beyond just diet and exercise. So I delivered this keynote speech, and then I went back to Discovery Channel. And I'm there, and I'm typing it up as a blog, because that's what I used to do. I used to write blogs, you know, well, it wasn't just writing blogs, it was coding, as in HTML coding. So there I am, this is before WordPress and all these fancy things that are so easy now. I'm there typing up this five keys to live heart healthy for the Discovery Health website and I could feel a presence over my shoulder. And it was this lovely woman named Rita. And she, I thought she was like critiquing, like to check my HTML tags, cause you know, I'm a doctor, I'm not an HTML coder. But what she said to me is this. She said, Andrea, that's a book. And I was like, huh, a book? She was like, yeah. What I didn't know 
is that before Rita came over to TV, she worked in publishing. She said, I can show you how that is a book. And at first I'm like, well, who would want to read a book by me? I mean, there's already Christiane Northrup. She's like the, the, the goddess of women's health. And my approach included psychology. And I'm like, there's already Wayne Dyer. He's got this psych on lock. And my approach does involve Eastern and Western medicine. And I'm like, there's already Deepak for that. Why would anyone want to read a book by me? Now, hands up. Are there any of you out there? Have you ever had that feeling like, who am I to write a book? Who would want to read my stuff? Like, there's already all this other stuff out there, these other authors with more experience and more, 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 more. Anybody else out there in that feeling of not enoughness? Well, here's what she said to me. She said, Andrea, yes, it's true. There are books out there by Christiane and Wayne and Deepak, but you are a different messenger. And even though you may have a similar message, the way that you deliver that message is different. You're a different messenger with a different voice. And there are going to be people out there who don't quite resonate with the way that Deepak or Wayne or someone else might say it, and they will resonate with you. My mind was blown, expanded, opened, and I started to give it some thought. And I couldn't really argue. I mean, it's true. We all have a different vibe. We all have a different essence. And it's true. Some people might respond to me and not to you and maybe to others. And so I went home and I started to outline, well, if I were to put this into a book, what would it be? Fast forward a few months, I'm working on this book with my friend Ginny kind of editing uh, with me. My mother, Dr. P, as we call her, she was contributing as well. And then I happened to have the good fortune of being on the Oprah Winfrey show. And I got a message from someone, and I'll never forget because he came from Penguin, one of the big publishers, and he said, I was home with a cold, watching the Oprah show, saw you, went to the website and found that you have no books. Are you interested in having a conversation? So I had already been working on it. I called up my literary agent. All I can say is, not very long after, this little baby was born. <laughs> the Pennington Plan, five simple steps for achieving vibrant health, emotional well-being, and spiritual growth. Yeah, look at this to early 2000s styling. But look at this. Can you see who endorsed it? Christiane Northrup, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Yep. So I want to say that the same is true for you. If you have some idea, something that you've been sitting on that could get out there and change lives, it means there's already an audience waiting for you. And it doesn't matter if other people are doing it, they're never going to do it with the exact same vibe and voice as you. All right? So today I'm going to share with you the three keys to getting a book done in 90 days or less. Now the first key, <laughs> you remember that book, Kim? Awesome. So the first key is to unlock your treasure. For those of you that joined me live with Ofkia Takens, she is the Jungian psychotherapist from the Netherlands, one of our global luminaries, a beautiful author who contributed her story to this book, Manifesting Love. Um, Ofkia created this. And this is the Archetypes and Talents deck. There's a deck and a guidebook. And while Ufkia was working with me in my Global Luminary Academy, I told her, like, you need to write a book on archetypes. And she's like, but why? I mean, there's already Carolyn Mace, and of course there's Carl Jung, and, you know, the founder of the archetype theories and, and whatnot. And I said, but they don't do it like you. And so in a matter of months, she worked with this amazing artist to create the Archetypes and Talents manual. And you see this? You see this dragon? on top of that treasure box, and he's got a key? Well, it turns out that the, the dragon is that inner critic, that voice that tells you, well, who do you think you are? Why should you? N -n -n -n. It's not really an external thing. For most of us, it's an internal thing. And so she made these amazing archetype cards. And you can play it in a specific game or as a guided meditation, which we just did this week. 
And the reason I'm telling you that is because in this concept, she wants you to unlock your treasure. And I want you to do the same. And by unlocking your treasure, I mean there is something inside of you. It's already in you. And you just need to own it. So unlocking that treasure means give yourself permission. It's okay if you're a newbie. It's okay if the book is not the best thing out there. I can tell you for 100% sure, this baby right here is not my best book ever. I mean, my best is probably yet to come, but this one, I mean, the difference between my first book and my 15th book, it's dramatic. But if I never started here, I wouldn't be where I am today. And so don't worry if it's, you know, not the best. You're going to get better over time. So the first key is really to unlock your treasure, to own the fact that whatever is within you, it just needs to be unlocked. You need to give yourself permission. Now, if you do not feel confident yet about getting past whatever internal blocks, like who am I to be, blah, 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 I understand. No shame in that. But I do have some resources to help you. One of the things that is included in the Real Self-Love Handbook, this baby, is an entire process for getting past your limiting beliefs and reprogramming your mind. I've also put them into free online versions, and one of them is this, how to escape victim mentality. Another one is three keys to becoming the hero of your life. I'm going to go through some of that hero process in today's session. So the first key is to unlock your treasure. If you feel blocked on a psychological level, not like writer's block, but I mean the sense of not being ready to take that leap, then you might want to check out, where am I pointing, <laughs> one of these free trainings so that you can get past that. Make sense? Awesome. So let's get back into it here. So key number one is to unlock your treasures. Key number two is to use your unique voice. So I pointed this out. Many of us as healers, as therapists, as coaches, uh, we're all trained more or less in some of the same stuff, right? At least for a medical doctor, we know there's a very standard curriculum. But what sets one doctor apart from another is our unique voice. So just trust that the divine would not put something in you and let it go to waste. Whatever is in you, that unique voice is meant to come out. And I can't stress this enough because for someone who actually did the copycat kind of fit into a mold, it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't fulfilling. But when I started to embrace my unique voice, well, that's why I've now got 13 other books that have come out, right? So, yes. Malin, I know you know our dear friend Okia, unlocking it, absolutely. So Kylan, you just bought the Real Self Love Handbook this morning, Woohoo! Gold stars and applause for you, Kylan. Um, for anyone who does get a copy of the Real Self Love Handbook, um, send me an email and I will give you the audiobook for free because, you know, I'm a generous girl. So it's all about using your unique voice. Uh, I can't stress this enough, trust in God. If you can't trust in yourself, then trust in the universe. Trust that these ideas, these things that come to you that you've been sitting on for so long, they deserve to get out into the world. And key number three for really getting this book out of your head, out of your heart, into the world, is to follow the success path. If you've ever heard of Jim Rohn, you know this, this quote, success leaves clues. I'm going to just break down all the clues for you and show you how you can go from an idea in your head to a concept, an outline, a proposal, if you want to go traditional publishing route, or how to self-publish and get it out there in 90 days or less. How does that sound to you? Does this sound good? Are y'all with me? Yes? All right, so let's start at the very, very beginning. There are a couple of different ways that you might want to publish. So for those of you who are interested in writing a book, could you please type in the chat what kind of book you're looking to do? Is it gonna be a how-to book, a self-help kind of book? 
Is it your memoir about your story of overcoming something? Tell me what kind of book so that I can tailor our training uh, exactly to the type of stuff that is going to be most relevant for you, okay? Um, because there are, there are some different formats that we work with. What I mentioned um, about the intellectual property is, okay, thank you, Dr. Karina, you're working on a memoir. Awesome. And Liesle, a how-to. Excellent. Marsha, how to get good health care today. Ooh, that's going to be a, a hot one. And Humble Victoria, a memoir. Ornella, you're writing a how-to. Great, so we've got both genres. And Kim, self-help plus memoir. Okay, so that's exactly what this was. This um, started off, I don't know if anybody knows, uh, or I know people in my community know, but this was originally published as more of a memoir, and it was called I Love You, Me. Also the song that I sang in my TEDx. But I revamped it because it really has so much how-to to it. And that's why it's called the Real Self-Love Handbook. All right. So, excellent. All right. Memoir and self-help, the journey from self-hate to self-love. Awesome, Noemi. That sounds awesome. And Carolina, your book will be related to the personal growth and personal development. Hamara, a memoir to show faith. And Frank, your question, how much time should I spend a day for writing a book? Excellent. So now we're getting into the success path. So when it comes to writing, one of the first things that I invite you to do, Frank, you need to tell me what kind of book you are looking to write. So for each of us, it's going to be a little bit different, but I definitely believe you can get a, a high quality book done in 30 days, in 90 days or less, three months or less. And here's how I would do it. The first thing is to come up with your concept. So in my case, it was five keys to vibrant health. I knew what each of those five steps were. As I pointed out in our intellectual property class, what you want to think through is, first of all, like what is the intention of the book? If you make a list, there's three things to, to think about. The first one is, what is my personal intention? So what is your personal intention for writing this personal growth book that you're doing, Frank, and everyone else? What is your intention? Now remember, as we shared in the intellectual property deep dive, we have intentions for ourselves, like am I using this to get leads, to establish my brand, um, to unburden my soul, you know, for a memoir, for some of us, it feels like that when you finally get something off your chest. So write down what is your personal intention. The second thing is what is your professional intention? Are you using this book to make money? I'm not against making money. I, I just said this shouldn't be an ego play. Is it to, to make money? Is it to, um, to use it as basically, I mean, as Trevor said the other day, it's like this is basically a calling card. You know, for many of us, your first book becomes like an expensive brochure <laughs> or an expensive business card because it really establishes your brand. It establishes who you are. Having a, a book also from the professional side, it helps you stand above everyone else out there. Whether it's a psychological thing or not, people have a perception that if you've published a book, you're just more credible, you're considered to be more professional, and you tend to be able to charge higher prices and the like. And so when you think about these things, what is your personal intention? Okay, so Frank, you want to give the world a gift. All right, fine. So then if you're coming from that place of generosity, that's excellent. What is your intention for the audience? Are they looking to learn? Someone mentioned faith, uh, to build their self-love or self-esteem. It might be to lose weight. It might be to manage a health condition. So you definitely want to make a list of what you want the audience to get out of it. And you keep that list so that as you're writing, you can always kind of go back and say, am I fulfilling the intentions or am I getting off track? Okay, um, so it, we look at ourselves personally, professionally, and the audience. Boom. You've got your concept. You've got your intention. The next thing that we move on to is an outline. 
Now, there are going to be two ways that we can look at this. One is the personal story format. So I'm going to guide you very quickly through the hero's journey. This is part of a, a course that I teach called Stories with Soul, which is awesome. It will help you really uh, know how to tell stories in a very compelling way, whether that's writing them, speaking them, doing live videos. Um, I'm going to lead you through that. And that's really helpful for personal memoirs, personal stories. And even if you're writing up like a case study, if you're writing a self-help book or a health book and you want to kind of tell the story of someone who's been through your program, then this, this will work. Okay? Now, so we're going to get to that. Um, I have slides for that. You have slides you can download. But the other piece of it is if you are doing a self-help book, Remember that we want to think about where are they starting off and I typically invite you to just write it on a piece of paper. It's the now and the then. When they, when they first pick up the book, that's now. What state are they in? What problems do they have? What are their issues? What are their concerns? What are their symptoms? And if you were to get them to the end result, which is increased faith, increased uh, inspiration, whatever that outcome is, then what are the steps that they're going to need to take? What are the shifts that they will need to experience psychologically to get to that state? If you just make a list of all the things they're going to need to do to get to the end result, you might end up seeing that you shuffle some of them around, like, okay, this one becomes before this one, and then this one. You've got the chapters of a book. The book is always going to have an introduction and a conclusion, and the meat should be getting them you know, through hopefully a story arc, which, you know, that requires a little bit of art, but you're taking them on a journey. All right? So if you're just doing a self-help book without your personal story, uh, I still invite you to do some good storytelling to keep people engaged, but that's how you can do it. And so for those of you writing a self-help or a health book, I'm going to challenge you. In order to make this a 90-day project, now, you don't have to push publish. It doesn't have to go out, but wouldn't it be awesome? This is what, February, March, April, May. Wouldn't it be so cool that by the end of May, before summer, your book is done? Like, done. Well, the first step to do that is to take the next 48 hours to create your outline and, and the concept. So, mapping out the steps that someone would need to get through from where they start when they pick up the book to where they end after implementing your wonderful wisdom. So that is your first challenge in the next 48 hours. And if you can do that and do everything else that I tell you in this workshop, you will have this book done in 90 days, all right? So 48 hours. Now, here's another little mindset thing. And then I'm gonna get back to your question, Frank, about how much time it will take. If we put limits I'm not asking for, about creative stuff at this moment. I'm talking about bringing a book from your expertise. If we give ourselves some limits, some, some guidelines, we will be more likely to produce. But there's this second key to that, and it's this. What you have to be willing to do is put aside the critic. Put aside that part of you that's like, oh, this is really crappy, or that voice in there from your... 10th grade English teacher that's like, you know, this form is bad. This, put all of the criticism aside and do your best to meditate, do some yoga, do a walk, do whatever, hug a tree, do whatever you need to do to get clear. Meditate, breathe, and invite your inner writer, if you want to call it an archetype. You can ask God, you can ask angels to just be with you during that writing session and just get out onto the screen or onto paper during that finite period of time. Now here's why you've got to put the critic out. The critic has no business in the writing stage. Critic can criticize once it's done, but not in the writing stage. Just tell them, no, this isn't, this isn't your, your room. You missed it. Go down the hall, three doors to the left, thanks, and then lock them out. The other thing you need to recognize is that you will hire an editor. Unless you are a professional editor, tell the editor in your head to go away. This is not your job. Say, editor, 
you who wants to critique and edit, that's not your job. The job that we're up to in the very beginning is just getting it out, creating what some people would call an imperfect rough draft, a messy rough draft. It's just a draft. Just get it out. We cannot perfect something if we leave it up here. It will always be a mess if it stays in your head. If we get it out, then it can be massaged. It can be worked. We can hire an editor. We can hire a copywriter, a developmental editor, a ghostwriter. That can be worked on. So I just want you to make sure you make that mindset shift and get the stuff out. So coming back to Frank's question about how long will it take, if you are willing to do this as an experiment, once you've mapped out your outline and you know what you're going to get people through, I would start with one of those steps. If you're taking them through a step-by-step -step process or one aspect that you know really well, I would say set a timer, get rid of all distractions, no phones, no things flashing on your computer or anywhere, and just write free-flowing as an exercise or an experiment. Don't think, oh my God, is this going to be good enough for the book? What are they, they going to think? Blah, blah, blah. Stop. It's just an experiment. And see how many words come out. If you do this for 30 minutes or an hour, you can start to approximate, approximate how long it's going to take you to write that book. Now, your typical book is, you know, somewhere between 30,000 to 50,000 words. If you're writing 1,000 words a day, you can do the math. You might, I mean, and that's just basically a, a, a juicy blog post. So you could certainly increase it or decrease it. But once you get a sense of how long it takes you to write how, how much you produce in one hour when you're not being filtered, you're not trying to edit yourself, then you can figure out how many days to dedicate to the writing. Okay? All right. So Stephanie has a question. Does this apply to writing a children's book? Um, you have it difficult to write a children's book. Um, this same process can absolutely work with children's books. Um, one of our dear friends, I didn't publish this book, but my friend, Gita Wintergraugard from Denmark, published this book, and she publishes a lot. She's also a publishing machine. She does it in a way where she tunes into the elements. Uh, writing children's books for a lot of our other authors, um, this, this one I did publish at Make Your Mark Glo Global, Yoli, Adventures in the Valley of the Shadows. This was created in a matter of weeks, like, uh, Emilia in Romania got a download. She'd already been studying a lot of positive psychology and mindset stuff. And she had this idea and she started drawing. She's an artist. And she created this beautiful comic book. So again, and this one was under 90 days, I think, from the moment she turned in the manuscript and all of that. Um, beautiful, beautiful book. So you can absolutely do it the same way. Map out, you know, where is this story going? And I, as we get into the hero's journey, you'll see how that is helpful as well. All right? All right, let's see here. I'm going to see if Keynote will play nice with me today. It hasn't been playing nice lately. I think I know why, but we're going to just give it a shot. And if not, we'll go elsewhere. All right. So it's working. All right, so now we're going to talk about what to do if you are doing... Um, a, a personal book, a, a memoir, for example. If you're going to use any of your own journey, then I invite you to start to write out the chapters of your life. So for those of you who are trying to write a book where you want to inspire someone about your story, you're going to want to figure out which parts of your life to use. And so what I, I teach in our Stories with Soul workshop is to make a list of your personal life chapters. This doesn't mean you're going to put all this in a book. Please understand. This is not book chapters. This is your life chapter. And so you look at the significant periods of time that you've lived. So this is my example. The significant periods of time for me were from birth to age three because that's when my parents were still together. That was a, a very specific piece of time. After that, when my mom moved us to Colorado and I was in primary school, there are a whole host of things that happen there, middle school, high school, university, medical school, and for me, my first career. So 
even before I was at Discovery Channel, there was this uh, period of time when I was working in health technology. And so when you can list the chapters of your life, and I'm going to get in the worksheet, you'll see that I've given you a blank form to do that in. You can start to write out where certain people, the characters, uh, the, the events that happened. You could also do it by category. Again, my example was after my parents' divorce. That could be a category of my life. And there are all sorts of things that happen in there that have influenced who I am today and why I teach the way I teach, why I you know, do all these free courses, for example. Uh, the period of time when I was with depression, my spiritual awakening, my life in France for the last 10 years, going global. So you could also break your life down into uh, categories of time. And so why do we do that? We then can really create what I call a timeline of life events. Now this is similar to the timeline that you might make when you're trying to figure out how you get a person from their start to the finish line. But on this timeline of your life events, after you've already written down on a separate sheet all of your life chapters, and you can kind of think, if I wanted to tell a story of how to love yourself and live as your authentic self, that's, that's what my book, The Real Self-Love Handbook, is about. I went back to my childhood and I looked at you know, some of those influences that impacted me, like my parents' divorce and being teased in school. And like, so you write down these, these events and you can start to list out maybe some characters, um, Characters meaning it could be that your older brother was one of the characters or the mean teacher or a family pet could be one of your characters. And once you've done that, then you have a, a really good way of kind of seeing what's coming next. All right? So here are the steps for your writing process. So you start to list these significant events, like I said, from, from birth to present. I am a visual person, a visual learner, so when I get these things all on a piece of paper, do some color coding. You could actually start to pick out high points and low points, you know, you can color code those. If there was a repeated situation, you know, every time you felt like the victim, for example, you could color code that. Every time there was an issue around, say, money, maybe, you know, money or financial woes is a part of it. So the bottom line is, what you're going to do is write down these significant events. Next up, you would identify people or characters, including non-physical ones, like depression could be a character. And then you want to write down, this is just for you, this isn't in a book yet, this is just your pre-writing phase. Describe the meaning, the lessons, the beliefs, the decisions that you made about your life, about yourself, and about the world. When you get all of this onto one sheet of paper, it's going to be so easy for you to kind of highlight the things that are worth including in your book. And if, if it's too early for that, you may not want to share everything, all right, now, so... Keep in mind that we only share the things that are healed, please. Um, then you can evaluate how those beliefs and decisions either helped or hindered you. You can look at all of the consequences of you know, the parents moving or a parent dying or a pet dying, for example. Like one of our beautiful contributors to, ah, to this beautiful book, Time to Rise, Joanna Soares, this was her first book she, she participated in with us. She's also in the top 10 traits of highly resilient people. But she tells a, a, a wonderful story of how her dog, Lucky, was what inspired her to become a veterinarian. And it was, you know, having Lucky in her life that was a major turning point. So you can list these sorts of things, right? Next, you want to identify... Um, actually, this is a, a worksheet from my, my brain reprogramming. Um, there may be some issues that you need healing and processing on that don't need to be in the book. This is a, you want to identify what you need to, to work on and heal. 
When we do this in Stories with Soul, Stories with Soul is not only for writers or aspiring authors. It's also for people who want to harness the power of their own story, and especially the story that you tell yourself about yourself. And so sometimes we have to do some processing and reprogramming and uh, re-identification. So that's why that's in there. And then, of course, you want to summarize the takeaway messages that you want, that should say the reader, not the ready, the reader to have. Okay. And step seven on this writing process is then you write a personal story. And again, it doesn't always have to be about the full story. It could be that you're just writing an aspect of your life, right? You don't need to do the entire story necessarily. Does that make sense, everyone? Any questions about this before I move into the hero's journey? Are we, are we good? Are we, are we still live? You guys have gone silent. <laughs> Maybe you're just taking notes. Um, so let me know if that makes sense to you. So using that, that's just your preparation because many people feel blocked. They're like, well, I don't know how to organize the, you know. So if, you, if you're writing about yourself, if, if part of you is gonna be woven into this book, when you get that sort of outline figured out, that's gonna to lead to some inspiration. Thank you for chiming in to let me know that this makes sense, that you're all still with me. <coughs> all right, good. I'm very glad. Excellent. Good to know. So for those of you that want a little more um, insight into how this whole process works, stay tuned. It is coming in March, March 20th, Stories with Soul. That is where I offer group writing and mentoring. We go through the hero's journey. We go through that timeline of life events. And each a participant gets to write and share stories and I can critique them. It's also very healing. Um, normally we do it here in the south of France, but with COVID we are doing it live online. So Stories with Soul is coming March 20th, so definitely stay tuned. It is a great support and all of my authors go through that program. They all go through Stories with Soul to learn how to tell good stories. Because no matter what you're doing, yeah, you have got to be a good storyteller. All right? So, very good. All right, so now we're going to shift into the hero's journey. Has anyone heard of the hero's journey? Do you already know what this is? I don't know if you do or you don't. All right. Well, I'm going to talk you through it. Shall we? All right. Dun, 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 dun. Back to Keynote. All right, so here is the hero's journey. I see some of your questions coming in. All right, so no, some of you have never heard of it. Oh, my heavens, okay. Well, the hero's journey is something that was written about by an American named Joseph Campbell. And what he identified is that all fairy tales, fables, and stories, no matter what culture from around the world, they all follow this same sort of journey. So if you looked at Cinderella, if you looked at Star Wars, The Matrix, if you looked at any blockbuster film, you could even look at, at novels, they all, the, the hero in the story goes through this very uh, identifiable journey. And we as humans are also on a heroic journey. It's the journey of the soul. And we pass through these 12 stages. And so if you will write using this as your guide, you are more likely to feel resonance or to create resonance in the reader. It, they will be hooked. Um, and, and again, if you talk to the people at any of the major film companies, this is what they do. You can actually analyze all of the major films. They follow the hero's journey. All right, so I'm going to break this down for you. There are basically four parts to the hero's journey. And the first is what we call the call, the call to adventure. 
And this is typically in your story. What you want to do is paint a picture of the ordinary world for your character. The ordinary world is where your hero has maybe not very much awareness of their problem. So for me, before I was the heroic author that I am today, my ordinary world, as I shared at the beginning here, was I was at Discovery Channel, I was working as a doctor, plus I was doing public speaking, and I was coding some HTML. That gives you a sense of my ordinary life. So in this first phase of the hero's journey, when you're writing, you want to tell us about your ordinary life. Now, if you were sick, you might paint the picture of what life was like on your worst day ever. For those of you who are writing a story about overcoming an illness, for example, or if you were, you know, you, you were born into a particular circumstance, uh, that might be where you want to paint that, um, that scene for us. So back to my case, I wasn't really aware that I had this imposter syndrome and this fear of, you know, writing my own book, but then I heard this call. And many of you have heard a calling. Someone has said it to you like, you need to write a book, or you, 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 really, you really should share your story. That is the call to adventure. That is the first nudge, the tingling, the message that comes where we start to have this increased awareness of the need to change. And for my, in my case, it was literally Rita standing behind me saying, that's a book. Now, typically what happens in many cases on the hero's journey is there's a refusal of the call. Anybody else out there? I know, you ain't even have to raise your hands because I know you are like I was. It was like, no, wait, wait, who, me? No, 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 no. And for many of you, you have probably been sitting on a book idea for many, many years. And that is often what happens. So if you look at um, the movie The Matrix, where Neo is like, no, Morpheus, you got it wrong. I'm not the one, I'm not the one, I'm not going. This is when you paint the picture as you're t telling your story of all the fear, the resistance to change. That's the refusal of the call. But ultimately, when we get to part two, this is where our hero meets a mentor. In my case, my friend Ginny, who was a writer, I met her at university, she helped me out. And my mom helped me out with writing my first book. And so meeting that mentor is what helps you to overcome some of the fear. And then there is what we call crossing the threshold. When you cross the threshold, that means you leave the ordinary world and you make that first step into the unknown. And for you, that might be, you know, joining us for Stories with Soul. And yes, Kim, I will share the link. Um, it starts March 20th. The sales page is not even live. You can't even buy it yet, um, but I will let you know. But crossing the threshold means that mentor, which doesn't have to be a physical person. It, I've had people hear messages from their, their grandparents who were passed on, from angels, from God. Like there's some mentor that says, I got your back. And that gave them the courage to step across the threshold into the unknown. And then next up is tests. <laughs> Have you ever, you know, told the universe, okay, I'm ready for such and such, or I'm never going to do that again. And then you get some sort of a test and it's like, oh, you just really wanted to see if I was serious, right? Well, that often happens in all of the, the major movies and books that you would read because this is what happens to us in life. We, we um, are given these, uh, these challenges, these tests, we might meet some allies, or we find out who our real allies are, and we also see that maybe there's some enemies. And sometimes, it's not always that the enemy is out there. Sometimes it's your own inner demons that start wreaking havoc on your life. When you move into step three, this is something they call the approach, approach to the inmost cave. Um, you may not actually go into a cave. Well, maybe you will if you're writing, but this is where you really start to go within to hunker down, it's as you're preparing for that major battle or major ordeal. And so for some of you, if it was cancer treatment, it may have been that, you know, that was when you went into this cave and, and gathering up all of your resources. You know, this is really the part that's all about your transformation. 
And there typically is some sort of an ordeal. There is typically a death that happens to our hero. It may be a death of part of yourself, like the old you dies away, and you, the heroic version of you that you are growing into, this is when that part of you is born. Um, oftentimes there, in movies, there is a literal death, and then the character comes back to life or is reborn in some magical way. And as a result of going through that ordeal, there's some sort of a reward. So for those of you where it's a health issue, there's some kind of reward. After going through that surgery or after going through that divorce or whatever your major ordeal was, there's this sense of having some, some major, uh, well, we usually call it the elixir. It's you're, you're gaining some sort of a treasure, all right? And then there's the road back. The road back for many heroic movies means they actually go back to the birthplace. And for some of us, that's what we do as well. We kind of go back to our family of origin. We go back, but we're a new person. And on that road pass back, there are usually some new challenges. Maybe it requires a, a new rededication on your path. And for me, once I finally, uh, started writing that book and when I got the call from the guy who saw me on Oprah, I was already into it and I had crossed the threshold. I had, um, they assigned a new editor to me um, at Penguin. So I was working with this new ally, kind of honing the stories, cleaning it up. And then there's the death, there is the transformation of I'm no longer a, an unpublished person and I emerged into this new being. and. The reward for me was having increased confidence and being able to be seen in a way that was very different than when I was just a doc in the box on TV. I had my own book, I had my own approach, I was telling my own story. It was a little bit watered down from how I am today. I mean, now you see me raw and uncut, but that's what it was. But then there was this moment of really going back, going back, um, working with some of my colleagues at the TV network. and you're a different person and that in and of itself can bring up uh, new challenges. Uh, absolutely. And then there is a sense of resurrection. It's the you that is reborn and you're really coming with a message to the world. And so maybe this is you if you said that you're writing a book that you want to be a gift, you want to inspire, you want to help people have faith. That is you being resurrected now as a new being. You're now a messenger. Maybe you're now a teacher, you're a way shower. Now, there may be some last minute dangers if you're writing uh, you know, a story, and that's okay, those come up too. And then ultimately there is the return, the return to wherever that original state may have been. You may be actually going to a physical location, but in the hero's journey, we always see the hero return, having fully mastered whatever that problem was, having fully arrived at a sense of self. So that is what that's all about. Has that been helpful? I, I think it'll be fun for you if you look at some of your favorite movies, and you can find these online as well. People will have a breakdown. Um, I do a breakdown of uh, Harry Potter and how it follows this very logical sequence. And that's one of the gifts that Joseph Campbell left us. You know, He has a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And all of these other archetypes may show up, but our hero always goes through these very uh, reliable steps and stages. So what questions do you have about that so far? Yes, it is a very cool system. And as you master it, um, you can learn how to tell stories. For those of you who want to be a public speaker, using this system, you can whittle it down and be able to tell a story in three minutes, in 30 minutes, in 18 minutes, as in a TED talk, it works wonders, all right? So, awesome, glad that this is helpful. Oh, Carolina, you already feel your transformation. I love it. Yes, awesome. Okay, great, so you guys have got, you're getting it, okay. Um, so, Frank says, this is a long one, let me see. Frank says, Dear Andrea, thank you so much for your help. Only to say to you how much your help 
works to this small story tale. A young boy came to the beach. Okay, this is your, your synopsis, I guess. A young boy came to the beach and has seen a very, uh, very many starfish on the land. He picked up a single one and put them back to the sea. An older man came to this boy asking him, what is he doing? The boy explained. So the old man said, you will never help them all. And the boy said, but for this one, it makes a difference and will save a life. Oh, well, I'm hoping I am making a difference. I do know that this will help. It will help you if you do it. That's all I can say. Um, this has happened so, so many times. I've literally got, you know, stories upon stories from, from this book that had uh, almost 20 authors in our anthology, Life After Trauma. They all went through stories with soul and shared a story following the hero's journey. This book, Magic and Miracles, I also shared my story that was of my out-of-body experience. Um, the, first, the first group book that I did was Turning Points. And this worked wonders. Teaching this hero's journey and the, the methodology worked wonders. Oh my gosh, it's five minutes before the hour. I still have to tell you how to publish. All right, so I'm going to look at... Um, yes, Jennifer, being on a hero's journey does happen multiple times in life. It absolutely does. You, If you really did that, that timeline of life events, you could break down one chapter of your life and see that it was a heroic journey. Like, for example, just for most of us, going to high school, you know, from the time that you enter as a freshman to graduating, you could literally map that period of time as a hero's journey. Um, starting your first career, becoming a parent, getting married, uh, you know, going through any sort of ordeal. So we all are on this heroic journey. From birth to death, there's the long journey where hopefully we are evolving more into our true authentic self, but we also go through these mini journeys along the way. So, and Marsha, I, I don't know if you were here before, but I would say it can be a challenge to get um, the ideas out. Um, are you saying to get the space? Do you mean the time or the space in your schedule? I highly recommend that you book it. Uh, if you wait until inspiration comes or you wait till you have time, it generally doesn't happen. But for people who say, Saturday at 10 a.m., I'm going to brew myself some tea, put on my headphones so nobody can disturb me, and I'm going to work on this, those are the people who get it done. But as I said earlier, you got to kick out the critics out of your head. All right? So, awesome. I'm glad that this is helping. Glad that you guys are getting some value out of it. How do you write a story with many learning sections? Um, I would try to look at the story arc. So Lisa, I'm not sure what you mean by many learning sections, but uh, if each section is a lesson in and of itself, for example, then you might write smaller stories within each section. You'll have to tell me more about, about what you're talking about. It would help me. Um, QI, I would love to help you on the marketing. That's a different masterclass on the marketing to increase sales. Um, but I will, if you go to makeyourmarkglobal.com, my website, I think there you will be able to find my marketing success masterclass. I'm not sure if it's still on the homepage, but the marketing, the A3 marketing success program is uh, ideal for helping self-published authors increase their visibility. Um, but that is a whole, marketing is a different class. Today we're just getting on the writing and the publishing of it. But uh, send me an email if you can't find it on my website and I will happily point you in the right direction. If you watch the masterclass, you'll get a lot of good stuff. Um, all right. All right, so someone on LinkedIn, your favorite book is Eat, Pray, Love. How does the system work if I want to write about a woman's travel journey or life in a faraway country? Ultimately, I'd like the result to inspire, uh, to be inspired to travel and go far for love. Well, it's the same thing. It's a hero's journey. If you look at Elizabeth's book, the Eat, Pray, Love book follows the hero's journey to a T. Um, and so you could do the same thing. Figure out where that character starts off and 
how would you get them through these 12 stages of the hero's journey? And that is, um, yeah, okay, Dahlia, that's what you would do. And Kylan, how do you discern the best editor for your book and then the best publisher? Okay, you're welcome. Uh, all right, so editors. All right, so let's talk, let's talk process now, shall we? All right, so you've, you've got the challenge. You've got 48 hours to come up with your concept and your outline. Give yourself a start time. Do it in two days' time. Get it out of your head. If you're just tuning in, watch back to the beginning to do the first 48 hours. Now, let's say that there are two ways in general, two big categories of publishing. Now, when I talked about the Pennington Plan, my first book, I went traditional with a big publishing company in New York. They paid me a nice advance. They assigned an editor. They assigned the graphic designer. Um, I did have some influence because of my position at the time, but it was all the publishing company that ran the show. And so if you wanted to go the traditional publishing route, what you would do is you don't necessarily have to write the full book. You would write what is called a book proposal. A book proposal is basically a business proposal, a business plan, where you would outline the chapters of the book. You might write the first two chapters, usually an intro or at least a, a sample chapter so that they can get a feel for your writing style. Because a, business, a, a book proposal is a business plan, you have to include your marketing. I'm saying this only because for many people who are first-time authors, it's very hard to get a traditional book deal. Now, again, I, I did because I was on TV every single day. I had a big brand, and uh, the publisher saw me on Oprah, so it was kind of easy. But for people these days, most of the big publishers are not investing a lot of money in first-time authors unless you have a big following. So if you have a, a big and very engaged following on social media, then you could get picked up by a, a big uh, traditional publisher. So you would outline in your proposal how you plan on marketing it, what your current subscriber base is, and all of that. So that's one version, to go the traditional publishing route. The other route is to either self-publish or do something we call a hybrid. Now, I'm going to take some water here. All right. So I'm going to break down to you the steps that you go through if you are looking to self-publish, and then I will get back to the questions in the Q&A. All right, so the first thing is uh, you write your book. So after you've done your 48 hours of getting the concept and the outline and all of your chapters, then you're going to choose one hour to write free-flowing without any editor, without any critic in your head, just flowing to find out how many words you write in an hour. Ideally, you'll, you'll have a sense then of how long it's going to take you to write your book. It, I, can't, I can't predict that for you because you just have to do it and test it and then you can determine how long it takes you to write. Once that book is done, if you wanted to self-publish it, there are many options. Um, there's something called Smashwords. There's Lulu. I don't recommend those. The ones that I use personally for all of my books and the authors that we publish at Make Your Mark Global are two. One of them is called Kindle Direct. It used to be called Create Space. It belongs to Amazon. With Kindle Direct, you can publish an ebook for Amazon and the print book for Amazon. And you can set it up so that it's available on multiple countries. So each Amazon country has their own website. So there's Amazon.com for the US, .ca for Canada, .fr here en français. So you can set that up with uh, the .com experience. So it's KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. That, gets, that takes care of Amazon, but that's not the whole world. There are a lot of people who have access to Amazon, but it's not the whole world. If you wanted global distribution, which is what we do at Make Your Mark Global, then there's a company called Ingram. Ingram Spark. Ingram is the world's largest uh, distributor of books. And so if you also wanted to be, have a greater chance of having your book 
in libraries or in physical bookstores, yes, they still exist, especially at airports, then you need to be in the Ingram catalog. So you can get your own account on Ingram. It's called Ingram Spark. Um, it used to be called Lightning Source. And you can get your own account there. And all you have to do then is first, after you've written the book, now we're going to get back into production. Okay, you've written your book. Now you want to hire an editor. Now, somebody had asked a question about editors. I like to test. I'm, I'm a scientist. I like to do experiments. Um, what, I, what I highly recommend, I do this for, for many of my authors, is I will take a section of the book and send it out to different editors and see what comes back. Now, we had some challenges because <laughs> this book, The Orgasm, Prescription for Women, uh, is the first book I self-published back in 2014, 2015. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it was the highest quality. It's over 80,000 words, it's over 300 pages, and I wanted to make sure it was excellent. So I hired a fancy New York editor who had a long history in publishing. And what I did is I sent her the manuscript and she did a sample edit. And when I got it back, I could see, it, was she what we call heavy handed, like editing everything or not? And for me, I liked, I liked her background and I liked her style, so I chose her. Now, I published a book that's a little bit woo woo, magic and miracles. I mean, I had people talking about amazing experiences they've had with like out of this world stuff. And so what I found is that it needed a different kind of editor. Someone who wasn't going to look at these woo-woo ideas and be like, what? So uh, what I recommend is that you, uh, there are websites like um, Fiverr. Don't recommend that. Personally, I've had good experiences on Fiverr, but the quality over the years has gotten lower. I use something called Upwork. Upwork is a online freelance website. It used to be called Elance. And on Upwork, I've got like eight editors that I work with for various authors. And I choose them based on what country they're from, because I have authors from all over the world and they have different um, abilities to write in English. So I choose the editor that I think is going to be best matched. And then even with um, our most recent book, uh, Holistic Healing and Manifesting Love, I did the same thing. I sent out chapters to editors and got back a sample. I mean, and we're talking a, a tiny bit of money, 15, 25 bucks to just sort, sort of have a feel for how heavy handed are they? Do they get it? Um, and you can try them out that way before you hire them for the full job. So once you've written your entire book, you're going to send it to an editor. You, if you wanted to, you could work with what we call a developmental editor. That's someone who works with you as you're writing, where you can hand over stuff to them. They edit. They may ask you questions like, this didn't make sense. What, what were you really trying to say? If you are a first-time writer, that can sometimes be very helpful uh, to be with an experienced writer. Um, we did that with a book that is coming out this year from Make Your Mark Global. One of our wonderful coaches from the Netherlands, uh, Joyce Wazir Ali, and she worked with one of our amazing editors from the UK. So you can work with someone as you're developing it as well. But once it's done, you send it to an editor, you get it fixed, and usually you're gonna read it again. You don't just stop there because sometimes they'll have questions for you. Sometimes they'll change words and you're like, no, I'm not, mm -mm, I don't accept that edit. It made sense the way I wrote it. Remember that the good thing about self-publishing is you get control. You don't have to give up that control to some big entity out there. All right, so you have it edited. You make the changes, accept the changes. And then I highly recommend you send it out to a, another set of eyes. I always send all of our books to another proofreader, someone who's never seen the book before, so that it's a fresh pair of eyes. Because sometimes when you're looking at the screen, our brains are wonderful at filling in blanks and filling in things that are missing. So if I've read a book too many times, I might miss a comma, miss a period, miss a misspelling. Well, not usually, but oftentimes it can happen, right? Usually because we've got the squiggly red lines, so you don't miss the misspellings. But because I work with people from many different cultures and countries, there's different spelling. 
So I always send the work out to that, I'm saying three, it's a second person, the second person who will proofread. And when it's all final and done, the third person you send it to is your formatter. And the format person is skilled in formatting that content for Kindle, because Kindle has its own format, um, for print, which goes to Amazon, because Amazon KDP has its own formatting rules and regulations, and for Ingram, because Ingram has its own formatting regulations, all right? We call that interior. The interior of the book needs to be formatted by a professional. Yes, if you're doing like a free book that you want to do a 99 cent book on Amazon, you can absolutely do that yourself in Microsoft Word, export it as a PDF. Um, even Amazon's KDP, they have guides on how to format your own book. So if you're doing it on a budget, you can absolutely do it yourself, no cost. But I've got great formatters who are not expensive and I just, I prefer having someone do it professionally. Um, but you could absolutely do it. Um, so that's the interior format. I'm going to put a pin there and come back to the cover. I would typically advise you to um, start working on the cover from the, the point where you're almost done with the book. If you've already got a title and you already have a sense for the style of where you want it to go, you could go to a website called 99designs. Actually, I think they changed their name. But 99designs um, is a website where you pay one flat fee and a bunch of designers will submit um, a draft of your book cover and you can pick which one you like. And then they start to you know, compete against each other and the, the bids can get better and better. For one flat fee, to believe it or not, that is exactly what I did. I opened up a bidding program on 99 Designs for this book, The Orgasm Prescription for Women. And when I ran the, they call it a contest, when I ran the contest, I got several people who came up with some very clever designs, but I loved this one, which is by um, Andrea and Stefan in Bosnia, Herzegovina. Uh, and I loved it. It was kind of funny, though, because once I chose this design in my final round, then a bunch of other designers started copying it. And I was like, y'all are not going to win. But anyway, 99 Designs is a nice way to go if you want multiple people who have a little bit higher caliber than what you might find on Fiverr. A lot of the people on Fiverr.com are using templates that are just kind of stock, whereas um, on places like Upwork and 99designs, you will often get real artists who are creating, you know, based on their own inspiration. And so I'm bringing up the, the cover because that's going to take some time to decide on the cover and get it the way you like it. And then that cover has to be formatted. So the person you hire to do your cover will need to know the specs, the specifications for both Amazon, if you're doing print on Amazon, and Ingram. And by the way, you can publish on both. We publish all of our books via Amazon because it's always available. Sometimes if we publish only with Ingram, Amazon will say, oh, the book won't be available for months. It's, we've got issues. But anyway, you can publish with both, all right? So that's the cover. The cover gets formatted by a professional. The interior gets formatted by a professional. And then you sit down on your Amazon KDP account and you write up your description, your meta tags, which is basically the keywords that someone might be searching to get your book, and you upload it into the, the world of KDP and add your date for when you want it to go live. And it'll be out there. Pretty easy to do. So you can absolutely get a book done in less than 90 days. Um, I've done it before and I don't recommend doing it always in that way, especially if you're doing a much longer book. But I want to get you out of procrastination and into action. All right. So... I think I have covered everything. Marketing is a different beast. I will send you all in the replay. Uh, when I, you get the replay email, actually you haven't gotten any replay emails. You've just been getting reminder emails. At the end of six days, I will send you the replay emails and I will include a link where you can watch our marketing masterclass so that once you've got the book done, you can learn how to market it. Um, all right, so 
Let's get to your questions. What have I missed as I've been breaking this down? Oh, and there's another thing. It's called uh, um, the Publishing Essentials mini course. If you want to hear me break it down and interview some of the authors that I've worked with who've done both traditional publishing and self-publishing and hybrid publishing, there is a free mini class um, also on makeyourmarkglobal.com. And if you watch that mini class, you will learn a lot more. And if you have more questions, I give you a ton of like advice in that. Okay, so back to your questions. <laughs> Lisa, your life has had many constant episodes all on different levels like Harry Potter. I love it. Yeah, well, I'm with you on that one. Yes, Frank, I, I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, my academy right now is waiting list only. The only way I do one-on-ones is via my 12-month academy. Um, every now and then I open things up, but our writer's workshop is in March, and that gives you some access to me. Um, I'm building another company right now, so I'm not taking a whole lot of clients. But you can send me an email, and I'll share the details with you, Frank, if that's of interest to you. And Jennifer, the list of books that I showed, uh, okay, you mean the, the books that I've published, the ones that are here on my table? Tell me exactly what you mean, sorry, because uh, I don't understand. All right, so Frank, yours is going to be in German, so I may not be able to help you out much with that. Um, Marsha, did you miss how to find an editor? I think you got the answer now. Uh, Elance, oh, sorry, it's now called Upwork is what I, I use when I'm bringing in new editors. It's been hugely helpful for me. Um, yes, so glad that this is making sense to you. Kyland, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, I'm glad things are feeling more manageable. That's a good thing. That is, that is always my goal. Okay, awesome. Carolina, I'm so glad that um, you feel that you are a hero and you have much to share. Well, you are a hero. So yes, bring it to the world, my friend. All right, so this concludes our kickstart process to get you out of your head and into the process of writing and publishing a book. You can do this in 90 days or less. Now, you, you may get to the end of 90 days and, and still feel like, maybe I'm not ready, but I would invite you to push yourself to get it out of you. The only reason I will keep bringing this up is because the more that we share and get things out and get feedback, the better we become as writers, as storytellers. Your story was not meant to be stuck inside of you. It was meant to have its own life, healing and inspiring other people. So I know that that can be a little daunting, but as I, as I mentioned before, if you have stuckness, then check out some of my free training, How to Escape Victim Mentality and the Three Keys to Becoming the Hero of Your Life. They all include the life writing process that is in the Real Self Love Handbook. So what I do with my, my clients is, uh, who need help with overcoming mental blocks, we take them through a life writing process and guided meditations that will help you reprogram your mind. So if you feel like you're not good enough or you still have that, that conversation of who am I, don't get too big for your britches, then do one of these trainings or do both of them. They, they're basically similar. They are all going to guide you through a process to reprogram your mind, to tap into that hero within, to heal the inner child who may have been, maybe you were bullied or teased at school and maybe someone told you that you were never going to amount to anything. You might need to heal some of that so that you can have more confidence. But it's absolutely possible and it's definitely worth doing. And outside of that, March 20th is when Stories with Soul goes live. It is a two-day live workshop on Zoom. It's private. It's not going to be out here for free. And what we do is we spend two days going through the hero's journey, going through your timeline of life events. You get to share it. You get coaching. You also get to work on telling your story, both verbally and written. 
And then we get together for several sessions after that. So two weeks later, we get back together so that we can critique your writing, you can get more support and more help. It really is empowering because it helps you gain confidence in owning your story and using your voice for good. I highly recommend this for people who want to heal personally, for people who want to be able to tell good stories, either written or on TED stages or on podcasts, and for speakers as well. If you want to be a compelling speaker, Stories with Soul is where you start because this is going to help you be more compelling. All right? Make sense? All right. So we have made it. We have made it through. That is day five done of our deep dives of live business training. If there are more questions, you can always send me an email. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our sixth and final deep dive. If you missed any of this series, don't worry. It is all on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. These six days of live deep dive training included day one, defining your personal brand. Two was all about your ideal customer, really defining your niche. Three was outlining your intellectual property. If you're confused about what you might share in your self-help book or a guidance book, go back to deep dive three. It will help you. Deep Dive 4 was about how to choose, test, and launch your first or next product. Today, it was how to write and publish your book. And tomorrow, we will craft your irresistible sales offer. This is going to help you learn how to have a conversation about sales that doesn't feel slimy. All right? So, wonderful to have you here for these six days of Deep Dive training. This is my gift to you to help you get out of blocks of inertia and into momentum. Thank you so much for being here. If you want more guidance and support on building out your personal brand or marketing your products, check out the Conscious Branding Podcast. It is on YouTube as a video podcast, but you can also listen on the go through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and tune in. I would love it if you would subscribe, rate, and review the podcast so that we can let more people know that I exist in the world. Don't keep me as a secret just for you, all right? Thank you again so much for being here. I'm so grateful for your presence. You are helping me fulfill my life's mission and my life's work, and I'm very, very grateful for that. So until tomorrow, I want you to remember, my dear friend, you unique, perfectly imperfect you, you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. See you tomorrow.